Hi everybody, this is Donata and welcome to another Termageddon Explainer video. Um, so today I'm going to show you how to create terms of service for your e-commerce website with Termageddon. Um, so basically you need a terms of service on your website if you're selling stuff on there. I mean a lot of other websites need terms of service as well to protect themselves, but on an e-commerce website terms of service will allow you to answer commonly um, asked user questions, explain how you um, do refunds, if you do cancellations, things like that. Um, and it will also help protect you as well, just like from any other website. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to log into your Termageddon dashboard and you are going to click on your install. Um, now we're using this install just as an example um, and basically this video assumes that you've already created your install and answered your global install information. If you haven't done that yet, um, check out one of our previous videos that shows you how to do that. But I've set all that up here. I've set up my privacy policy and disclaimer and now we're going to show you how to set up your terms of service. So you're going to click add policy and you're going to choose terms of service. All right, so can users create accounts on your website? I'm going to say no. Next, are users able to make payments while on your website or app? Yes, since I'm selling stuff, I'm going to, um, you know, I'm going to have to charge people for the stuff that I sell. So what information is collected to make payments? So we're going to say credit card, expiration date, CCV, billing address, and shipping address. So the next question, does a third pot processor such as Stripe or PayPal process those payments? Um, that's usually yes for most websites. Most websites don't process the payments themselves. Um, so this will allow you to note that a third party processor is being used. Um, and it's the same thing here because the third party processor is actually collecting that information but that's the information that is needed to make a payment. So people want to know that. Um, so you want to have that in your terms of service. All right, are buyers able to cancel uh, an order? So canceling an order is basically asking not to receive the item prior to shipment. So let's say I'm selling pens and somebody on my website buys those pens, I haven't shipped them yet, and they've decided that they don't want them anymore. So yes, I'm going to allow them to cancel. So when can a user cancel his or her order? I'm going to say prior to shipment. Um, because after shipment, you can't really cancel that order anymore because it's already shipped. That would be more of a refund. Um, so do you offer refunds? I'm going to say yes. Within how many days of purchase? I'm going to say 30 days. Um, you have 30 days after you make that purchase to ask me for a refund. And then when can a user receive the refund? Sometimes companies just offer refunds. There's no conditions necessary. But let's say I do have a condition, I need you to have your receipt uh, in order for me to be able to process a refund. And if you don't have a receipt, I won't um, process that refund for you. Um, do you offer a warranty on any of the products or services that you sell through your website or application? No, I do not. Um, I'm going to click Next. Do you offer a subscription, so regular payments from a customer to receive a product? No, I'm kind of a more one-off, buy pens and then you're done kind of deal. Do you offer free trial? No. I'm going to click Next. Does your website or application contain links to other sites or social media? Yes, I have links to, let's say, Facebook. Um, if someone sees someone else infringing on your intellectual property, who should they contact? Um, so let's say they're walking down the street and they're seeing you know, vegan Hans pens somewhere else. Um, I want them to contact me um, to be able to basically enforce my intellectual property rights. And then I'm going to put in my email here as well. If someone thinks that you are infringing on their intellectual property, who should they contact? Um, so this will actually help you with copyright infringement claims in case you're accidentally, you know, infringing on somebody else's copyright. Um, so those people can t contact you instead of just suing you directly right away. Um, so you can resolve that dispute. So I'm going to put in my name, my email, uh, my phone number, and then my address.
and that's actually not my address that's just a dummy address that I'm using um, so you might want to you would want to use your business address here um, you know you might want to stray away from PO boxes because that's just not best practice under the Digi Digital Millennium Copyright Act um, or you can put your personal address in here um, so what is your contact information not at termageddon.com submit okay and then you're going to be taken to an embed code that you're going to copy and paste onto your website or you're going to have your developer do that for you um, and you want to make sure that you use the embed code because that's what allows us to update the policies whenever the laws change um, but you can view the policy here as well which talks about purchases cancellations refunds um, all of that stuff and in case anything does change on your website, so let's say users can create uh, create accounts now, you're going to go into edit policy details and just change um, change those answers. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how you um, create a terms of service for your e-commerce website using Termageddon. Thank you.